Binge or Bin from Independent TV, bringing you the lowdown on which TV shows are binge-worthy and which ones are bin-worthy. This week, we've been watching Stranger Things Season 4 and Netflix's Borgen revival, Power and Glory. And we'll introduce you to our pick of hidden gems we think you should be watching. Annabelle! Jacob! How are you? (laughs) I'm very well. I've been watching a lot of television. Well, good, because we're going to get stuck into it. Yeah, we are. What have you been watching? I have been watching Stranger Things, which is the return of uh, one of Netflix's most watched TV shows. It's season four now, the kids are a lot older, Winona Ryder's still there, and David Harbour, despite being killed off in the last season, is actually still alive in it after all, which is, for me, emblematic of what is wrong with this show. I thought the first season was quite good, second was all right, and I think season three just went off the boil and it needed to be brought to an end but no we've got two more seasons the thing for me is stranger things is like a roller coaster ride that looks very fun looks exciting looks like you want to give it a go and then when you do give it a go and you ride it you realize it's actually extremely underwhelming and it's just smokes and mirrors the duffer brothers matt and ross the brothers who have created this the series they kind of know how to throw ideas around but when it comes to executing them it is just more of the same is basically presenting an idea that is a homage to something from the 70s or the 80s. This time around, we're in horror territory where we're riffing on A Nightmare on Elm Street and Dreamscape. But then the execution is basically to introduce something that's quite scary, that's quite unnerving, and then just have it scream at the screen uh, at the end of every episode. And then the episode ends, and then we start again, and it's back with, I don't know, the kids doing something inane. Uh, and the kids, dare I say, the actors here, who are, for the most part, good, I think, They're all phoning it in now. For a while, we tried to be happy. Normal. I know that's impossible. A bit resentful of the fact that they've had to reject a lot of scripts because now they're big business. People want to hire them for other things. They're having to turn a lot of things down because of their contractual obligations to this show. And you can tell with Finn Wolfhard especially, that he just, he just pods out, he wants out of it. And I think this is a larger problem with Netflix, to be honest. I don't think they're actually putting time into creating shows that have a, a long lasting effect or changing the game in any way. Um, they have stuff that's good, they have stuff that looks good on the surface by throwing money at it, but they don't, they're not really in it for the long game. A few good performances aside, I think the standouts are Joe Keery, who plays Steve, Sadie Sink, who plays Max. Um, and Noah Schnapp, who plays Will Byers. I don't think the show is up to scratch. I mean, that sounds pretty damning, so I think I know where you're going with it. But is Stranger Things season four a binge or a bin? I I went in with all the best intentions, you know. The first (laughs) series was a binge for me. The second, I would have ultimately paired on the side of binge. Season three, it was a bin, but I thought they could have maybe learned from their mistake. But it's the same, and because of that, it has to be a bin. What have you been watching? Bigger bigger and better things. So I've been watching Borgen, which is back after 10 years. So the original series ran for three seasons between 2010 and 2013. And it was one of the shows that just really put like Scandi TV on the map. And I think it just, it's remained one of the best and the most memorable. Borgen and The Killing and The Bridge. I feel like those three are just phenomenal TV. And actually the team behind The Killing actually wrote uh, Borgen as well so it kind of makes sense because you've got two very strong female protagonists and I mean in The Killing she's leading a homicide investigation whereas in Borgen she is leading a country she's she was the Prime Minister of Denmark and it, it kind of follows her political career but back to the series I was trying to find a way to explain it and someone once told me that it was like the Danish version of West Wing And I feel like that's a pretty accurate summation of the show. It is like a political drama with a thoughtful liberal leader at the center. It's better than West Wing in the way that it manages to like create suspense and drama out of like the most mundane aspects of political life. So now it's back on Netflix and now it's called Borgen Power and Glory. So Power and Glory picks up like a few years after season three left off. And yeah, we return to our main character who's played by the phenomenal Sidse Babbitt Knudsen. Uh, whose one Emmy nomination in 2012 feels like incredibly inadequate. Can we three make an agreement that if I can feel that I'm... ...so give me a little break. That's an agreement. Thank you.
considering how like, incomparable she is in this role. She's no longer prime minister and now she's finding her feet as the new foreign minister in a new coalition government under a new prime minister, also a woman, and kind of the best moments in the series unfold as conflict between the two. They're both very headstrong and like any political drama, it's about power, the struggle for power. And I think this season especially looks at how power can corrupt someone. It gets kind of dark and it's the closest we've seen to our main character, like Breaking Bad. I think for the people who enjoyed those scenes of her kind of being a bit ruthless in the past three seasons, they're really good. You'll have something to like dig your teeth into with this. Yeah, I know it's called Borgen Power and Glory, but is there <laughs> much glory to be had? Is it a binge or a bin? There is plenty of glory. It's definitely a bin. Okay, well, moving on to mm. hidden gems. What have you got for me this week? We love a hidden gem, don't we? We love we love shining a light on the shows that we love to talk about down the pub or whatever. And I now get to do that to you here. So mine is one very close to my heart, actually. It's This Is England, which started life as a film in 2006, directed by Shane Meadows, of course. And he brought back the gang from the film for a coming of age TV show, three series, one set in 1986, one set in 1988, and the final one set in 1990. The show picks up where the film left off, just in the late 80s, with the gang, played by Joe Gilgan, Vicky McClure, obviously star of Line of Duty and the ITV Line of Duty knockoff trigger point. Thomas Turgoose. Sean, is now a good time to talk about college? No. It's not my cup of tea, I don't want to go. I think this is probably the apotheosis of what Shane Meadows can do. Is just some of the most uplifting, heart-wrenching TV you will ever see. Please watch it. It is astonishing stuff. So that's my hit. Ding, ding, ding. What what is yours? <laughs> Well, mine is very different, much less gritty. <laughs> mine no. is Sex Lives of College Girls, which is a, an HBO show that came out last year. I love a teen show. I, I'm past my teen years, but I love Gossip Girl, like The OC, like all of that. There is something about teen drama that is ridiculous, but addictive, and I can't get enough. <laughs> so if you're like me, Sex Lives of College Girls kind of fits into that bracket really well. Although it's a little bit more lighthearted, it follows like a group of four girls who are thrown together in this fictional college. It's very preppy, like the kind of Gilmore Girls vibe, which is very comforting to watch on TV. Mm. Young Stalin could get it, right? You could have been on Riverdale. The, the show is 10 episodes co-created by Mindy Kaling, who most people will know as starring as Kelly Kapoor on the US reboot of The Office, which she also helped to write. I think everything she touches is gold, really. She, she did Never Have I Ever, another teen drama, which is on Netflix, which I cannot speak highly enough of. The Mindy Project, which is great as well. She's just got a solid reputation for creating like good-hearted, funny shows. It's co-created between her and Justin Noble, who also wrote for Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Never Have I Ever. I wouldn't say it's of the same caliber as This Is England, for sure, <laughs> but it does. Well it, like, if you're well after some comfort TV, sometimes you don't want to watch This Is England. Sometimes you want to watch Sex Lives of the College Girls, so. Maybe yeah. you could watch This Is England and then you're going to need Sex Lives of the College Girls afterwards to watch. Exactly. To it's it an antidote. You're not yeah. going to be crying. <laughs> She's not used to guys like you. You should have seen the boy who came to visit her. He looked like a goat. I did forget my toothbrush. Put a shirt on. We've given more than enough recommendations and warnings, Stranger Things, looking at you, uh, to keep people going until next time. Like and comment below and subscribe for more from Independent TV.